forward. Thank you. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. It says number four, college newspaper interviews a psychologist about a proposed system for rating the teaching ability of faculty members. The psychologist says, the evidence indicates that the correlation between a faculty member's research productivity and teaching rating is close to zero. Which of the following is the best interpretation of this statement? Well, if it's close to zero, essentially there's no linear correlation between them. So it's certainly not A. Um, I would say C. Yeah, I would say C also, but I think the answer said D. Uh, yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, I hear that mean. That is wrong. So, Isaac, you have a question. Yes, uh, on the, along the same lines as um, it being a wrong question, I'm trying to find it. It's problems requiring solutions. I'm just trying to find it on the, oh, okay. Yeah, um, so number three, I believe. Are you the one sharing right now? Or is that? No, I'm not. I'll share. I'll, I'll oh, you're doing it? Yeah, so um, on the answer sheet, it says problem, problems requiring written solutions. Wait, so birth weights at the Los Angeles hospital are normally distributed with a mean of 3350 and a standard deviation of 4 to 80. The hospital plan set up special observation for the lightest 4%. What should be the cutoff? Well, we take out our calculator. Wait, sorry. I think, did you want the one with the written solution? My bad. Yeah, it was the one with the written solution. Oh, it's, it's not that one, Professor. Sorry. You this had one? one job. You had one job. No, I don't know. <sighs> okay, here, let me share my screen because I'm looking at the answer. Um, I can't find which problem it was. I just wanted to ask about the answer, though. Sorry. Oh, uh, I forgive you. <laughs> Okay, can you see this? Yeah. Right here. Okay, yeah. So it says since the probability and a probability oh, wait, 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 wait. model what's, stumped. What's the question though? These are the solutions. What's the question? Yeah, I don't I can't find which question it is. Okay, so hold to on. The, hold, hold on. on. Producing data. Let me see if I have um, the review sheet here. Probability. Oh, wait. Wait. I found it. I found it. Okay. I I'll I'll I'll, I'll share this question. Okay. Got it. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so you see this question? Yes. Okay, so number three, it says the number of people sitting at a randomly uh, sitting at a randomly selected table in a library has a probability model given fill in the missing entry. It's zero, one, two, three, four, point one, five, point two, blank, point two, and point oh five. Now well, the answer here it says like to find the polyp, it has to equal to one, right? I assume. Well, they have to add up to one. Oh, or they have to add up to one, right? So uh, for the answer given, it's one minus plus everything. Yeah. But then it goes up to 0.4. And I just assume that's an error for it to be 0.4 or 0.6 instead of 0.4. No, the answer to the question is 0.4. If you add up those. Right, okay. If you add up those. Okay, so the answer. Sorry. So the answer is wrong then on the answer sheet. Well, let me see the answer sheet again. Okay. Uh, yes, it's not one minus 0. 0.4, it should be one minus 0. 0.6 equals 0. 0.4. Okay, all right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, that's just, that's just a silly, silly mistake. Whoever, uh, I mean, listen, the person who, who made these guys, they, 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 they know math. It's not like they don't know math, but, um, but they're, um, you know, a, a, anyone can make a typo. Of course, having it on the review guide is the worst place to make your typo, but it can happen. All right, any other questions? <clears throat> yeah, I have a question. Let me share my screen. Okay. I'm reviewing the, the test reviews that the tutoring center um, attached in their Canvas site. Okay. And I found like a bunch of mistakes also, but if this one, number 85, Okay, in a simple linear regression problem, suppose that the least square regression line is y equals one minus two x, and r squared is 0.81. Then the regret the correlation coefficient r is going to be b negative 0.9. Okay, yeah. 
because they put a wrong one. Okay. Is that, is that their answer <laughs> or, or do they have something different? They put A. No, it's not A. You can see because the slope of the regression line is negative. So if the slope yeah. of, if the slope of the regression line is negative, you know it's going to have negative correlation. So B, so it has to be negative 0.9. Okay. Let me see. I think we found another one. Okay, this one. Um, previous to the other question, I know you said that they add up to, to one. Yeah. Um, so they put A, but if I add it to one, it would, um, the missing would be point two. Wait, so which one are we on right now? Um, number 16. 16, what is the number represented by the question mark in the frequency table? Well, yeah, the frequencies have to add to 100%. So 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.45, 0 0.55, 0 0.65, it should be 0 0.2. Yeah, okay. And then number 18, the last one. What is the height of the missing rectangle represented by the question mark in the histogram? Uh, the height, well, let's take a look here. If, point fifth, if point 0 0.05 is one, and then 0.25 is five times as much. It should be a frequency of five. Mm -hmm. Okay, they put three. Okay, th thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, how do I? Anyone know? There's supposed to be a way to record attendance on this, but I don't see how. Um, oh, well, well. I'll figure it out while you guys still work. Meanwhile, someone joins us. Jennifer, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Okay, so. Um, Wait, I have, I have another question. Is that okay? Um, no, but go ahead anyways. <laughs> um, number two, I know the answer is a uh, median. I don't know what, I, I don't, don't, I don't know what number two is. You wanna share? Uh huh. Yeah. Sorry. I forgive you. Um, it's this one, but I don't know why it's median. Well, because it's skewed. So if it's skewed, we don't want to use the mean because the mean is uh, a non-resistant measure. It's very much um, affected by um, by uh, outliers. Whenever we have a skewed data, we want to use the median as our measure of center. But wouldn't the mean be like a more accurate measurement of the not when it's skewed, not when it's skewed data? If it's skewed data, the median is more accurate. Okay, and that's, then that's just something to know. Okay, and I have one more. Um, okay. Okay, uh, 11C. 11C, the following data represents the yield of a chemical cake. What is the residual associated with the observation 225.85.6? Well, in order to do this, we need the equation of the line. Have you found the equation of the line? Yeah, I have. Okay, and when you plug in 225 into that, what do you get? Uh, let me do that right now. Because the residual is going to be the difference between uh, your actual outcome, which is 85.6, and the predicted outcome via the line, which is whatever number you're calculating right now. Uh, what am I plugging it in? 225? 225. Then, value. Yes. Um, roughly 86.97. Okay, so 85.6 minus that number will be your residual. So 85.6 minus 86.7. Okay, negative one point, yeah, 37, which is about 1.4, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, yeah. How, how do you know that you're supposed to do that? Uh, because that's the definition of a residual. The, res the definition of a residual is your actual outcome minus your predicted outcome via the line of best fit. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank so you. That, that is that is the definition. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Oh. 
11 people. Okay. I was hoping on the heat that more people from our class would show up, but um, well, they're not here. What can I say? Yeah, they're flakes like that. Well, it's just, you know, I mean, my guess is from what I'm seeing about the grades across from the other professors is that most people are not doing very well. And then you have this opportunity to, to you know, to study and you're not taking it. So as professors, we, uh, we have a hard time emphasizing if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I get you. But it, it's, it's a hard course. I, I'm not gonna. It's, uh, I think online makes it hard. You know, it's, it's, it's hard, yeah. to, hard to focus when no, no one's actually forcing you to. Let's see, is it possible yeah. you can go over the test review number one that the math tutoring canvas attached so it contained a lot of mistakes? Um, so do you have a copy of that that you want to share your screen with? Hmm. Oh, it's like the whole packet that the tutoring center attached on their Canvas site. All right, so let me, let me go to Canvas then, hold on. So I can log in here. Oh, yeah. My computer's a little slow. Uh, unless Anahi, do you have it? What she's referring to? Uh, which one did she want? She said the test review number one, the math tutoring canvas, uh, canvas attached. Math tutoring canvas. Uh, is yeah. that like, is yeah. that in the courses, right? I think, yeah, I think on your canvas page, one of your options. Oh, there's a bunch of sheets. Which one is it? I think it's called test review number one. For math, this is math 150, right? Uh, no, math 140. Math 140. You were going to talk about oh, okay. Yeah, I found it. Uh, yeah, let me share it. I don't, I don't have an, uh, is this it? Is this it? <clears throat> is this the one? <coughs> yeah. It's All right. And uh, okay, let's go. Question one to three refer to the following. What is the most accurate description for type of the following random variables, amount of soft drink in a 12 ounce cone? Sorry, 12 ounce can. That would be quantitative. It is uh, it is numerical. It is an amount. And two, the college that you are enrolled in uh, is uh, categorical. There's no math involved. It's just categories. So one is B, two is A. Three, a consumer group is examining the actual weight of cans of tomato soup produced by a company with a reputation for inaccurate content labels. The type of random variable most appropriate to the measurement is, well, it's an actual weight. And, oh, thank you. Um, uh, why do they have double symbols there? Is there am I, two things that I'm missing here? Uh, well, one is the weight. Yeah, what's and the one? I don't know what the second one is. Is it the t labels? So would it be um, quantitative and then qualitative? Uh, I mean, if that's what they mean, I don't really understand the question. Um, I mean, certainly the actual weight of tomato cans is certainly quantitative. So if that's if that's um, the first part of the answer, then it's either A or B. Uh, yeah, the has it as a but i'm not sure why they doubled it i don't know why they doubled it either um especially when they say the type of random variable and it's not plural it's just singular the type of random variable so it's quantitative i think it's another mistake the answer is just quantitative uh i don't 
I don't know, I have any idea what they're talking about there. I think it's a mistake. It should be quantitative, which makes sense, right? It's an actual weight, correct? It should be quantitative. Make sense so far? Yeah. Okay, question four. Uh, questions four to six refer to the following. The amount of money earned per month by 400 bank managers are shown below. The number of managers earning at most medium is gonna be 100 because at most means inclusive. So um, low or medium totals 100. B, the percentage of managers earning at least medium, that means medium or above, that's 380 out of 400. And 380 out of 400 is most likely the 95%. I'm too tired to actually do the math, but it's probably that. And then six in a bar chart, the relative frequency associated with managers who earn high salary, that's 200 out of 400, that would be 50%. Does that make sense for those three? Yeah. The following, and I'm gonna go quick. Uh, so if I say something that you're not sure about, or you're unsure why, or I'm not clear, just, just stop me. This goes for everyone, of course. Number seven, the following is a histogram showing the distribution per year of the cumulative property damage caused by tornadoes over the period 1950 to 1999 in each of the 50 states and Puerto Rico. The data are in millions of dollars and the class intervals are zero to 10, 10 to 20 and so forth. So where's the question? And I hate, do you wanna scroll down, please? I don't see no question. Ah, which of the following statements are true? One, the distribution of the average Tornado damage is right skewed. Can you go back up to the graph for a second, please, so I can see it? Yes, it is certainly right skewed. The tail is on the right side. And to approximately 50% of the annual reports of property damage were less than 10 million. Um, so it's very difficult for me to read the numbers there, but it certainly looks to be roughly 50% in the first column and 50% cumulative from all the other ones. So I would have to say that yes. So, so the answer is true, or I forgot what the question was. Wait, is this no here? Is this better for you? Uh, no, it's just the 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 <laughs> the. This says twenty five. That's right. Yeah, yeah, but, but that's not a relative frequency. That's a total frequency, which means oh, you, have, okay. you have to count up how many there are. Oh wait, fifty states, right? And Puerto Rico. That's fifty one. I don't have to count. That's fifty one. So that column is 25, which means 25 of the 51 are less than uh, 10. That's slightly under 50%. So what were the options again? Uh, approximately 50% of the annual reports were less than 10 million. They are both true. So the answer would be B, both one and two. It says approximately, so both one and two are, pre are true. Do we agree? Yes. Okay. Um, eight, the following is a STEM plot of the IQ test scores of 78 seventh grade students in a rural Midwestern school. What is the median IQ score of these 78 students? Well, 78 is an even number. So that means it's gonna be halfway between the 39th and the 40th. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 14, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Oh, I lost count. Four, six, 10, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 22, 24, 5, 27, 30, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ah, so the 39th and the 40th are both 110. So uh, the answer is going to be either B or C. The median is 110. Also, what percent of these 78 students have scores above 120? So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10. There's 13 of them out of 78. 13 out of 78 is 16%, 16.7%. So the answer is B. Does that make sense? Yeah. Has everyone followed me so far? Yes. Any questions, uh, comments, remarks, metaphors, allegories, similes, nothing? Okay. Question nine through 12. Let me just see if anyone uh, anyone new showed up. It looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. 
we have the same people. Okay. Uh, a sample of 50 TV viewers was asked, should TV sponsors pull their sponsorship from programs or try numerous viewer complaints? Below are the results of the survey. Y equals yes, N equals no, and W is without opinion. Consider the following table summarizing the above data. The value that belongs in place of the quadruple question mark. The quadruple question mark is the bottom of the first, which is the total frequency. And the answer to that is 50, because they told us it's 50 TV viewers. So the total frequency is 50. Do we agree with that? Yes. The value that belongs in the place of the quintuple question mark is going to be a relative frequency of 100%, because the total of all the relative frequencies has to add to 100%. The value that belongs in the place of the single question mark is the percent of no's. Well, here we actually have to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 out of 50 would be 48%. Ah, frequency, 24, sorry, 24. So the answer is A. And then the value that belongs in the place of the double question mark, well, 24 out of 40, out of uh, um, 50 is 48%. That's going to be 0.48. That's going to be part D. All with me so far? I have a question about 10. You said it's 100%, so that would be D for one. Uh, yes, because it's, um, if you look at the relative, uh-oh, what happened? If you look at the relative, what did happen? If you look at the relative frequencies there, they're decimals. So they don't write 30 for 30%, they write 0.3. So we don't write 100 for 100%, we write 0.1. On the heat, you're sorry. Being... Yeah, one sec, sorry. My laptop just like did something weird. Okay, let me share again. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh... Do you want me to go? I think I, uh, number 13, the value that belongs in place of the triple question mark. So let's go back up so I can see it, please. And the triple question mark. Well, we already know that the first one is 24 and the bottom is 50. So 24 plus 15 is 39. That leaves 11 for the triple question mark. Or you can, of course, go to the uh, data itself and count. And you should get 11 there too. Right? All good? All okay. good. Everyone else, all good? Hey, it's like my own class. All right, so question 14 to 15 refer to the following. There are 800 students in the School of Business Administration. There are four majors in the school, accounting, finance, management, and marketing. The following displays the number of students in each major. So 240, 160, 320, and who knows? We're not sure. But wait, we can figure it out because there's 800 in total. They'll probably ask that. In fact, they do. The appropriate height of the missing rectangle is, well, 240 and 160 is 400. 400 and 320 is 720, leaving 80 to go. So number 14 is C. Now the percent of students majoring in finance or management. Well, in total, I have 480 students in finance or management. 480 is a little more than half of 800. So which of those numbers is a little more than 50%? It's probably D, but let's just make sure. 480 out of 800 is in fact 60%. So the answer to 15 is D. Ah, uh, question 16 through 19. Again, stop me if you have any questions of on anything. Um, let's see. We have the frequency table summarizing the data. Oh, we did this one a few minutes ago. So what is the number represented by the question mark in the frequency table? Uh, I forgot what it, what it was. 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.45, 5, 5, 6, 5. Okay, so when you add up all those relative frequencies, actually, I don't even have to do that. Ooh. There's multiple ways of doing this one. I love it when there's more than one way of solving a problem. So one way, my instinctive way, I added up all the relative frequencies. I got 0.8 and I said, okay, well, it's got to add to 100%. So it's got to be 0.2. But there's another way, an easier way. And if you look at the line above the four with a frequency of two, we see that two has a relative frequency of 0.1. So four is twice that. So it has to be a relative frequency of 0.2. Either way works, of course. 17, what is your best guess at the mode for this data distribution? Well, the mode is going to be the one that occurs the most time. The most time is the 46 to 52 class. 
its width six from 46 to 52. So if I had to pick one specific number to represent that class, I'd pick the one right in the middle. And the number right in the middle of 46 to 52 is 49. So the answer would be B, 49. 18. Um, what, yes. So I have a question about that one. Yeah. Why would why would it be the 46 to 52 for the mode? Because it's the class that has the highest frequency. It's five in that class, and no other class has a frequency five or more. Remember, the mode is the one that occurs the most often, right? How did you figure out that it was five? Well, look at the 0.25 relative frequency. That means it's five times the relative frequency of 0 0.05, because 0 0.05 times five is 0.25. And we know by looking at the last row there that a 0 0.05 relative frequency corresponds to a frequency of one. So a 0.25 is five times as much. It has to be a relative frequency of five. I mean, a, a frequency of five. Okay, thank you. That makes sense. All right. Uh, 18. I have a question. Yes. Um, it's taking it back to number 15. You said there was 480. Where exactly did you get 480 for number 15? Or the answer would be 60%, but I didn't understand how you got to 60%. Well, I was asking for the, the percent of students majoring in finance or management, correct? Uh huh. How many people are majoring in finance or management? Count them. 160. 160 is for finance, but what about management? Oh, okay, got it, got it, thank you. All right, all right, back. So we have, what is the height of the missed rectangle represented by the question mark? The question mark is, we just established that that was five. Uh, Janet, it says your hand is raised. Was that an earlier question or do you have a new question? Yeah, sorry, this is the same question, sorry. No problem, okay. 19, judging by the histogram, what histogram? Did you see a histogram? I didn't see a histogram. What histogram? Is there a histogram? We gotta make our own histogram? Man, oh, that histogram. Okay, go back to the histogram. So one, two, 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 sorry, one, two, 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 four, three, five, one. Visualizing that, it looks like we got a tail on the left. So it looks like it is left skewed and unimodal. So I would go for B for that one. What does unimodal mean? As one mode. Oh, okay as opposed to bimodal, which is, has two modes, or trimodal, which I guess three modes. But usually we just stop it. Question. Questions 19 to 21. Refer to the following. Well, if it's 19 to 21, then why are we doing 20 right now? OK, well, that's another mistake. Anyways, 15% of the students in the School of Business Administration are majoring in economics. 20% in finance, 35% in management, and 30% in accounting. The graphical devices which can be used to represent, to present these data is R. Well, this is categorical data. There's four categories. We do not use a histogram for categorical data. So A is out. We do use a pie chart. We also use a bar graph, and therefore the answer is D, both a bar graph and a pie chart. 21, a tabular summary of a set of data showing the fraction of the total number of items in several classes would be a relative frequency distribution. If I wanted the actual amounts, that's frequency. If I want the relative amounts, that's relative frequency. 22, one main purpose of a histogram is to I would have to go to with A on that one, show where the data are concentrated. It's not a time series, that's certainly out. Make the distribution look normal instead of skewed. Well, you can't make it look anything. If it's skewed, it's skewed. If it's normal, it's normal. Display the percentiles? No, the percentiles is done from a box plot, not a histogram. So the only one that makes sense is show where the data are concentrated. In other words, where are your highest columns that's where the data is mostly concentrated so the answer to 22 would be d what is the shape of the frequency distribution given the following information mean 46 median 48.1 and mode 53 the mode is where the peak is the mean is the direction of 
whole if it's skewed one way or the other and the median will be somewhere in between. So because the mean is pulled to the left, we have a left skewed distribution. Because remember, the mean is a non-resistant measure. The mean is pulled by skewness. The median, not so much, and the mode, not at all. 24, which measure of central tendency or spread corresponds to the 50th percentile? The 50th percentile is, by definition, the median. It is another name for exactly the same thing. 25, if a distribution is symmetric, then the relationship between the mean and the median is that they are equal. If it's symmetric, it's like a mirror image across the center of the graph, center of the display, and therefore the mean and median are at the same location. 26, a characteristic of the blank as a measure of central tendency is the fact that its magnitude is affected by a single extremely large or extremely small value. That would be the mean. We just spoke about that. The mean is non-resistant to so one. And by the way, on the heat, this goes back to what we did earlier with that first question you asked me about um, about whether or not it is uh, the mean or median should be used for the skewed graph. You have outliers that will really affect the mean in a bad way, which is why we want to use the median. So the answer to 26 is mean. It is affected very much by a single large or extremely small value. 27, if a distribution is heavily skewed to the left, which relationship between the mean and median is most likely? The mean will be pulled more to the left, which means the mean is less than the median. That should be A. 28, which of the following statements is correct? The numerical value of the standard deviation, A, can never be larger than the variance. That is not true. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance, but if the variance is less than one, its square root is actually bigger than itself. What's the square root of one fourth? That would be one half. So square roots can sometimes be larger. So the answer to A, so it's not A. Uh, it must be greater than or equal to zero. This is correct. It must be greater than or equal to zero because it is a positive square root. It's a measure of spread. You can't have a negative spread. It makes no sense. Uh, C, it's expressed in square units. Well, that's false. So the answer is uh, B. Uh, 29. And the sum of the deviations of the individual data elements from their mean is always equal to zero. It's why we square them to get the best fit line. If we just do the deviations themselves, it always adds to zero. There's no information there. So we square to get data that makes sense. The deviations always add to zero. 30, in a right skewed distribution, which of the following statements is correct? The tail is to the left. No, that's false because the tail defines the skewness. The mode is to the left of the median. That seems right because the mode stays still and the median is pulled. <clears throat> the mode is to the right. Well, that would be exactly the opposite. And so that's wrong. And D, the median is to the right of the mean. No, the mean is pulled more than the median. So the answer was B. 31, the following data. And before we go, stop going any further. We've done 30 questions. Is it all making sense? Are things unclear? Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Am I talking in the wrong language? Can we do 21 again real quick? I didn't get that one. 21. Oh, like I didn't, oh. I, you, you were just going so fast. <laughs> oh, well, I'm only going fast because I'm waiting for someone to stop me and say, hold up there, buddy. So I will go slower from here on out. Do you say 21 was the one you wanted? Yeah. So the summary of the data showing the fraction of the total number. Well, relative frequency is about percents. It's about fractions, 20% this one, 30% that one, 18% that one. The frequency says how many? That's not a, a, a fraction, that's the total amount. So A, so, oh, chef fraction, oh, sorry, B, B. B. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions on anything that I've gone too fast? If I'm going too fast, too slow, speak up, say something. 
participate. Acknowledge my existence. Oh, seriously, guys, hello? You're here to learn. This is the time. Express yourself. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a cry. Give me something. Can you just explain 30 again really quick on why it's B? 30. In a right skew distribution, which of the following statements is correct? If it's skewed to the right, that means the mean is pulled to the right a lot. The median is pulled to the right a little, and the mode stays where it is. So the median is to the right of the mode. In other words, the mode is to the left of the median. Right, things are pulled in the direction of skew. Does that make sense? Yes, no, maybe yes, thank no. you. All right, what are we up to? 31. The following data represent the time in minutes spent shopping at a grocery center, sorry, a grocery store by a random sample of 10 shoppers. What is the 75th percentile? Well, 10 is an even number. So that means the median would be located in the 5.5th spot, halfway between the fifth and the sixth. And then when I look at the ones after that, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, that's an odd number. So the median is in the middle, that's spot number eight. So the 75th percentile will be in spot number eight, not equal to eight, but in spot number eight. So when I line those numbers up, from lowest to highest, spot number eight. It, oh my God, it's also eight. Crazy. So the answer is C, but that's just a major coincidence. It's not because it's the eighth spot, but rather because the eighth spot happens to be eight. I did that on my head, and I know you guys can't see what's going on in my brain, and trust me, you're, you're, you're better off that way. But is anyone not sure how to do this problem? Going once, twice. Wait, it's the first number in the 75th on this side, right? Well, we don't have a box plot. For 31, we don't have a box plot. We only have 10 numbers. So. Oh, oh, sorry. My bad. You're looking at the so, wrong which, which sample are you getting for? Um, like, you line them up. I line one, them up. The there's 10 of them because it said there's 10. Right? Wait, yeah, but how do you know which number is the 75th percentile? Well, the 75th percentile is the median of the right half. So first we find the overall median, or at least we find what spot the overall median is in. Since it's 10 data points, the spot of the overall median is between the fifth and the sixth data point. Agreed? Yes. And now when we look to the right of that data point, we have five data points, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and 10th. And the 75th percentile will be the median of that, which is the third of the ones on the right, which is the eighth spot. So when we line them up from lowest to highest, right? When we line them up from lowest to highest, the eighth spot will be the 75th percentile. Wait, uh, would the 75th percentile also be known as Q3 or no? Q3, same thing. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Was that, was that no, Isaac, a, was Isaac someone else? That was me, Isaac. Okay. okay. Um, so, yeah, sorry. It, so it's the first number on the last quarter? No, it's, 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 the, it's the middle of the right half. It's the middle of the right half. So what happens is we first divide the data into two equal parts. We find- Oh, I get it now. Okay, okay. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. I'm just, I'm just wondering like why you, why you knew that it was, like how you knew it was um, the middle of the right half. Like- Because I'm smart. What do you want me to say? I don't know. It's because, uh, it's because I know that the 75th percentile is halfway between the 50th and the 100th, which is halfway between the, oh. the right side, right? It's just, um, yeah, right? I mean, sometimes, right. sometimes, you know, 
as you go further and further, you just, you just, it's sometimes it's hard to explain. I mean, then again, it's my job to do so, but, but sometimes it's just, some things are just very clear and it's hard to, to really internalize. I don't know. I get it now. I get it now. Yeah. Okay. So I just got to keep checking attendance as people show up here. Uh, it's nice that people are coming. It's wonderful. Uh, but then people are leaving and okay. What are we on 32? Uh, the following box plot represents the distribution of the number of vacation days per year taken by employees of a large financial firm. Which of the following statements is correct? A, the mean equals 17. No idea. The mean is not represented on a box plot. So I have no idea about the mean. Immediately discounting that as a possibility. B, the distribution is skewed to the left. No, the left half is really bunched up. It's very tight. Whereas the right half is really spread out. So there's a long tail on the right side. So no, it's not skewed to the left, it's skewed to the right. 25% of employees take 25 or more vacation days per year. They're probably saying that's correct, but just always be aware it's approximately 25%. Not exactly 100, it's not always exactly 125%, it's in the ballpark. So they're probably saying C is correct, although technically, technically D is correct because it's not exactly 25%. But if I was, um, if I was betting on it, I would say that the intention of the problem is for C to be correct. Each one of those parts of the box plot represents 25%. The, the side tail, the middle box, the left box, the right box, and the right tail. 33, the distribution of grade point average, is a test gonna be, oh, you're asking me about the test? You really expect me to give you information about the final? Is that what you think is gonna happen here? I just want to know if like it's going to be like this or it's going to be more calculator heavy. Well, I do know that there's a number of multiple choice questions and a number of free response questions. That's all I can tell you. Okay. 33, Thank you. 33. I have a question. Yes. Um, my math, I'm taking math 140 science. My professor told me it's all multiple choice and there's no that's, um, free that's, response. That's for 140 SCI, but 140 business has free response. Oh, okay. Thank you. And this is a review for both. And she's my student, uh, the one who was talking a few minutes ago. So I know she's in business, right? You're in business, right? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Okay. 33. Um, the distribution of grade point averages at a large university had the following percentiles, Q1, Q2, and Q3. What is the IQR? Well, it's just a definition. How was the IQR defined? It is defined as Q3 minus Q1, 3.72 minus 2.68, which is about the 1.04. Is that correct? Did I do my math right? Uh, two points, yeah, 1.04. So the answer is C. The IQR, the interquartile range is just Q3 minus Q1, 34. Consider the following sample, random sample of five numbers, four, eight, 10, 12, 16, the mean, and the standard deviation of the sample are blank and blank respectively. Oi, well, I can do it by, I can certainly do the mean in my head, but since I don't wanna do the standard deviation in my head, I am gonna put this into my calculator and much faster than I can do it in my head, I have a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 4.47. So, <clears throat> The answer to that is A. Um, yeah, of course, looking at some of these, I mean, B and C, you can immediately discount because the standard deviations 80 and 16 are bigger than the actual range of data. The range of data is 12. So how exactly are you gonna have a spread of 16 to 80? So those I can immediately throw out. Uh, then D, I could easily throw out because the mean can't be 12.5. That's that's way too far to the right. So even without my calculator, I could have eliminated a bunch of stuff and gotten an A. <clears throat> 35. Which of the following statements is true for the following data values? 9, 7, 8, 6, 9, 10, and 14. So only the mean and median are equal. So then we got to calculate the mean and the median. Well, let's do this. This is small enough. So 
First, how many data points are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven data points. So the median is going to be the fourth when lined up from smallest to largest. Six, seven, eight. We have a median of nine. Nine appears twice. Nothing else appears twice. We have a mode of nine. And then does the median agree? Nine plus seven, 16, plus eight, 24, plus six, 30, 39, 49. 59, 63 divided by seven is nine. They are all nine. So the answer is D. The mean, the median, and mode are all equal. Number 36, Sylvia Brown's final exam mark of 82 was a 90th percentile in a class of a thousand students. Good job, Sylvia. This means that nine. 100 students, because 90% of 1,000 is 900. 900 students scored 82 or less. So the answer is B. 37, which of the following is a true statement? In a histogram, the proportion of the total area, which must be to the right of the mean, <clears throat> is A, less than 50%, if the distribution is skewed to the left. Well, if it's skewed to the left, then the mean is pulled to the left more than the median, which means it's gonna be more than 50%. So that's not right. B, exactly 50% if the distribution is unimodal, not necessarily, the mode could be anywhere. So that doesn't make sense. Um, C, more than 50% if it's skewed to the right. Well, that's the same as A, but uh, I mean, the same logic as A. If it's skewed to the right, the mean is pulled to the right, it should be less than 50%. But if it's symmetric, then it's exactly 50% left and exactly 50% right, because it has to be a mirror image over itself. So the answer would be D. By the way, for those uh, following along at home, um, how many mistakes has there been in the answer key up until now, up until question 36? I didn't even look at this one, so. Oh, okay, well. If, if you want, I can pull it up. But... Nah, it's not, I, I, not, a, not a big deal. 37, uh, 38. For any set of measurements, what is the sum of the deviations of the measurements from their mean? I thought we had this question already. In fact, we did. So what's the answer? Zero. Zero. Deviations always add to zero. 39. Which of the following is not a measure of dispersion or spread? Well, the range is, it's how spread out the data is, lowest to highest. The interquartile range is, it's how spread out the center is from Q3 to Q1. The standard deviation is, it's more complicated mathematically, but it still is a measure of spread. But the 50th percentile is an actual specific number. It is the median. And as such, it is not a measure of spread, it's just a measure of center. So the answer is B. 40, <clears throat> which measure of central location is meaningful when the data are qualitative? Um, well, <clears throat> you can't have a mean, it makes no sense because there's no numbers or a median <laughs> or mid-range, but the mode is just which one occurs the most often. And if you have categories, you can still talk about which category occurs the most often. So the only one that makes sense is C, the mode. All right, so brief quick stop. We're in question 40. How's everything going so far? Do things making sense? Are things clear? Are things confusing? Are we understanding more than we did when we came in an hour ago? Is this a complete waste of time? They're good, okay. Things are clear, okay. Question 41. The following data represent the waiting times <clears throat> in minutes to be served for a random sample of eight bank customers. The modal waiting time, that's the one that occurs the most often. Is there any number that occurs 
more than once here. I don't think I see any. So the answer is none of these. D, 42, the median waiting time. Well, uh, eight. So the median of eight digits, eight values, will be the one that occurs between the fourth and the fifth, halfway between the fourth and fifth data point. So lining them up, we have two, three, four, five, seven. So halfway between five and seven, the median is going to be six. The median will be A for 42. 43, what's the variance? I'm not going to do this by hand. I will take out my calculator and I will put it in three, 10, five, eight, seven, nine, four, and two. Then I say, do my math for me. And it gives me a variance of whatever 2.9277 squared is. So 2.9277 squared. I have a variance of 8.57. Uh, what did you do for that? Sorry. Uh, well, I put my data into my calculator. Oh, and like L1. L1, yeah. And then I had it uh, compute the standard deviation for me in uh, stat calc one variable stats. And then I squared it, and that gave me 8.57. For the TI calculator, there's an option for the variance as well, right? We could use that. Is there? Yeah, I think for me, it's number eight, like below standard deviation. Wait, wait. So you you, you do uh, calc one? I went to second, second stat, and then for me, it's number eight variance. Wait, second stat? Yeah, second and then stat. I don't have a variance here. It's all the way till the end of where it says the, the column of math. <gasps> no way. There it is. Crazy. See, I even learned something coming here today. Look at that. I didn't know what had it here. Fantastic. Now the other stuff, of course, what does prod stand for? What is prod? I don't know what that is. <gasps> My calculator can do variance. <sighs> King. Okay. Awesome job. 44. A sample of 15 observations has a standard deviation of four. The sum of the squared deviations from the sample mean is. Sixteen times fourteen is two hundred twenty-four. So the answer is C. But this one, this one, you actually need the formula for standard deviation. If you do not have the formula for standard deviation, I don't see any way of answering question forty-four. So for what is this? One, huh? Sorry. For this one, they put A, but that's wrong, right? Yeah, A is wrong. Unless I just did it in my head wrong, which is always possible. See, doing things in your head is not the greatest idea, <clears throat> but let's walk through it and we'll see if I made a mistake or not. So what is the formula for standard deviation? Anyone know? This is like back in chapter, I don't know, chapter two, chapter three, back in the very beginning of the course. Anyone recall what the formula for standard deviation was? Can I annotate on this screen? Uh, I think you might be able to since you're the host. Uh, I, I don't know how to, I don't see anything. Um, it's like view options and then Wait, the, wait, 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 where am I going? Where am I going? At the very top, it should say you are viewing. Um, and then it should, next to it, it should say view options. Yeah, I see that. I see that. I annotate. Oh, there it is. Crazy. I'm running so much. So the formula for, can you guys see what I'm writing here? Yes. Yeah. Stop moving the screen. 
Sorry, my bad. It's okay. Whenever I come to like unmute myself, it moves the bar. Gotcha. So if you guys recall this, So this is the formula for the standard deviation. So in our case, the standard deviation was four. So I take four and I square both sides. So I get 16 equals that sum over n minus one and it's 15. So 16 equals that sum over 14. And therefore that sum is equal to 16 times 14 which is 224. But what is that sum? It is the sum of the squared deviations from the sample mean. So the answer is not A, the answer is C, it should be 224. But that is only done from the formula. There is no, I don't see any other way of doing it other than from the formula. Can you possibly go over that? I got lost where you said 16. Yeah, so I'm gonna plug in what I have here. So standard deviation is four. And then the bottom is 15 minus one is 14. And the top, I'm just gonna call X because I don't wanna write it again. Okay, so I have four equals the square root of the top over 14. With me so far? Yes. And then I'm gonna square both sides. So 16 is equal to the thing on the top over 14. And therefore the thing on the top when I cross multiply is 16 times 14, 224. So X equals 224. But what is X? It is the top, and the top is exactly what the problem is asking me to solve for. The sum of the squares of the deviations. Make sense? Yes, it does, thank you. All right, I'm gonna go clear this now, clear old drawings, and we can continue. Okay, that was fun. I learned two things today. All right, um, 45. The average score for a class of 25 students was 75. The 15 female students in the class averaged 70. The male students in the class averaged what? Well, let's see if we can do this just by um, a little bit of logic. If the overall average was 75 and a larger proportion of students than, than the ones that we're looking for scored 70, that means the weighted average of 75 has to have 70 as a stronger weight, which means the males should be further away than 80. So I'm gonna guess 82.5. That's gonna be my guess, 82.5. But now let's do it mathematically. Let's go back to annotates. Let's do it mathematically. So the average for the entire class was 75. So that means 75 equals the sum of all of my data points divided by 25. And this is male, female one, all the way through female 15, plus male one, all the way through male 10. If you add up the 10 males and the 15 females and you add up their scores and divide by 25, they just told me that this that, that is equal to 75. Do we agree? Yes, no, maybe so? Yes. Okay, you just moved it again. Okay, now the 15 female students averaged uh, 70. So 70 is equal to the sum of the 15 females divided by 15. So that second equation allows me to calculate the sum of the 15 females. This part here, the sum of the 15 females, that's just 1,050. I just did the math on my calculator. And that's just 1,050. So if I do 75 times 25, 1875, and subtract off 1,050, 
that tells me that the males must be the other 825. And because the males add to 825 and there's 10 of them, their average is 82.5. So the answer is in fact B, my intuition was correct. Oh, someone's new here. Lyle, did you just come or have you been here for a while? Let's take attendance as people show up, but I, sometimes I missed it. You're new, welcome. That's a 12 o'clock, okay. Okay. Um, anyways, hopefully that made sense. That was a nice little problem. Uh, 46. Which of the following summary measures cannot be easily approximated from a box plot? Well, the range is easy because it's the whole range. The IQR is easy. That's the box part. The second quartile is easy. That's the median. But the standard deviation, that is not. So the answer is D. What is the length of the box in the box plot? Well, that is just the IQR. That is the interquartal range. That takes us to the end of question 47. Let's keep going. We're going great. Again, stop me at any time if you have a question, something's unclear. Uh, 48 to 53, the distribution of final grades in an introductory statistics class is shown by the following box plot. I wonder how accurate this box plot is. Nobody above a 73, people scoring as low as like a 20. That's typical. So comment on the shape of the distribution of grades. So is this left, right, bell-shaped or uniform? Shout it out if you know it. Don't be shy. Left, right, bell-shaped or uniform? Left skewed. It is left skewed. The tail's on the left. 49. The 25th percentile is approximately equal to what? 60. 60. The 25th percentile is where the first little um, whisker ends and the box begins. 40. What is you best guess? What is you best guess value for the mean? What is you best guess value? It doesn't sound grammatically um, correct. What is you best guess value for the mean? Probably uh, like 67.5 or that's the median. But... Ah, that's the median. Yeah, but it's like 25% of the data is like, um, I, I don't know, to me it makes sense, but I don't know. So what's your answer again? 65? 67.5, just because like if 25% is like um, on the 25th and on the other 25 and on 25, 25, it would kind of make sense to me if like, if the data is like that, then it would be. Gotcha. So the fact that 67.5 is not an answer. That doesn't change your opinion of what the answer should be? That, oh, wait. Oh, my bad. I was looking at the different... My bad. <laughs> um, I was like, if you want to go with that, that's fine. I, I was looking at the wrong answer choices. I love it. Sorry, teacher. There are four options are all wrong, and this is the right one. It should be E. Okay, so what is it? Uh, the, what is you best guess value? C. So you say C, 65. So I agree with you. Yeah. Because for a slightly different reason though, although perhaps intuitively this is what you're thinking. What went through my mind when I saw this problem is that the median is about 67, maybe 68. And um, I know that it's left skewed. We did that in part. 48, question 48. If it's left skewed, that means the mean is going to be pulled to the left of the median. So if the median is about 68, the mean has to be less than that. So that immediately throws out D, 70. 55 is way left to the point that just very little data, there, less, less than 25% data. So either 60 or 65. And again, 
um, the mean and median are usually fairly close unless it's really skewed. And as such, 65 is um, significantly more realistic than 60, which only has 25%. So I, I think you and I were along the, the same lines there. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully everyone else, the silent majority is as well. 51, which is the most appropriate measure of center to use in this case? The, uh, median? the which one? The median. The median is correct. Why? X is the center and the mean, like you said, is a different um, value because it would be the left okay. side. Very good. Let me just quickly check to make sure my attendance rosters that I started with. Everyone's still here. Now this person left. I'm not sure how long ago. I'll just make sense of the number. This person left. Uh, she's still here. Jennifer Dowd is still here. Rachel is here. Emily. Hi, Diana. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I haven't died yet. Thanks for asking. <laughs> That's great. That's good to hear. Well, I set the bar low. Every day is a good day. So let's see. Rachel's here. Emily. Did Emily leave? I don't see her here. I think she left as well. Uh, this person left as well. And that person's here. And Jason. When did you get here, Jason? Uh, probably like 20 minutes ago. Well, welcome. And since it's left skewed, the meaning, yes, because it's left skewed, because we have skewed data, we certainly would like to use the median rather than the mean. So the answer would be B. Can you possibly go over 49 again, please? The 25th percentile? Yes. Where does the first whisker stop and the box begin? On the left of the box plot. Starting from the left side, the whisker ends and the box begins where? I'm asking you, what number? Like where 75? I'm sorry? The whisker ends at like around 75? No, the the, we're starting on the left side of the box, not on the right side. The left of the box plot. That whisker on the left side ends and the box starts at what number? Oh, 60. And that's your answer. That's where the, seven, that's where the 25th percentile is. That's okay, it. Thank there's, you. There's, there's nothing more. That's that's it. That that's all, all we got. Nothing else. Okay. Make sense? I hope so. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Good. Um, where are we? Fifty-two. Identify the one point five IQR boundaries. Well, first we got to find the IQR before we can do the one point five IQR boundaries. What is the IQR approximately? Um. Approximately, what is the value between five and sixty? <laughs> Don't need that. Is it ten? It's ten. Sixty to seventy. The IQR is from the twenty-fifth percentile to the seventy-fifth percentile. It's the length of the box, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just ten. So, what is the one point five IQR? Um. 15? 15. And therefore, what are my 1.5 IQR boundaries? Is it 45 and 75? Nope. No. Where do you get 45 from? Uh, 1.5 times IQR. Well, Q1 minus that. Okay, so if I did the same thing on the other side, what should it be? Seventy-five. Oh, wait, you have to add it to the other side, no? Yeah, that, 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 yeah pretty much, yeah. Oh, 85, sorry. <laughs> what should the answer be? D. D. B or D? D, D as in dog. D is in derivative. Oh, okay. <laughs> D is in damnation. I can't really think of any funny words for that. You know, like 
P is in pneumonia, K is a knife. But I can't think of anything funny for D, which is ironic given that it's my name. All right, anyways. 53, identify, if any, possible outliers. So are there any outliers in this example? Yes. You think so, eh? Where? Oh, uh, like over here. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know how many data points I have there. For all I know, the only data point is that one at the ends. But what number is that? Um, By the way, I think it's supposed to be a fit. Wait, 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 wait. We got another typo here. Look at those numbers in the top. Yeah, the scale doesn't make sense. Yeah, <laughs> that's got to be a 50. That can't be five. So, um, so that means that there, okay. are, there are no outliers because 45 and 85 are, are outside the data points. Right? I thought, I thought originally it was five. But then when I look at the other numbers, it can't. Yeah, whoever's just said the scale is correct, right? The scale makes no sense. Make sense? Oh, yeah. Anthony Jackson showed up. How long have you been here, Anthony? Just came? I think so, 12.15, okay. Yeah, I just came. All right, well, welcome. Okay, and oh my God, how many questions are there in this thing? Holy mother crap. A lot. Oh my God. Like, um, like 112? Holy, well, let's keep going. Let's see if we can finish the whole thing. All right, so where, where the hell are we? Uh, okay, normal. A normal population has approximately 100% of the population measurements within oh. one, two, three, or four. Well. Three? Well, three is 99.7%. And four is, well, it's closer to 103 is, so I... I would I would say four. I mean, if, if one of those four is the best guess, why not pick the one that's the closest, which is four? I mean, I've never used four in the, my class. You know, you do one, you do two, you do three, 68, 95, 99.7. But if you're just approximating, then four is better than three. So I'm going to go with D. Does that make sense? So how many percentage would be fall into the four? That's a great question. Let's take a look at what, what it would be. Uh, normal CDF, negative four to four, 99.99%. So 99.7 or 99.99, 99.99 is closer. I'm going oh, yeah. with four. I'm going with four. 55, the blank rule applies only to distributions that are bell-shaped and symmetrical. That's a 68, 95, 99.7 rule. That is correct. Those are the three numbers for the one deviation, two deviations, and three deviations. 56, the price of a random sample of music CDs have, have or has, the price I think it should be has a mean value of $13.5 and a standard deviation of $2. If the prices have an approximate mound shaped distribution, basically assume it's normal. What can we say about the proportion of CDs whose price fall between 9.5 and 7.5? That's two deviations down and two deviations up. Two deviations in either direction. What's my answer going to be? B. The answer is B, 95%. Do we agree? I hope we agree because it's correct. 57. What is the Z score associated with a price of 1525? How do I get the Z score? Uh, was it? We subtracted from the mean and divided by the standard deviation. Close. You said subtracted from the mean, but it's actually that minus the mean. So the order, yeah. order is flipped. So 1525 minus the mean, which is 13.5. That's what? 1.75. 1.75 divided by 2 is uh, 0.875. So the answer should be B. 
What is the price of a CD that has a z-score of negative 1.25? That means it's 1.25 deviations below the mean. A deviation is $2, so that's $1.50 below the mean. So that will be $12. Uh oh, I don't see it there. Did I do it wrong in my head? 1.25, one and a quarter deviations. Oh, two dollars and fifty cents below the mean. Sorry. On the heat, I still need the question if you don't mind. It's a little, yeah, there we go. Um, because these are all these are all referring to the same question. So it should be uh did I just do my head wrong? Hold on. Can we write it down, please? Yeah. That's a good idea. Uh, so the Z score is negative 1.25 and that equals the actual data, which is what we're looking for, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So negative 1.25 times two plus 13.5 I get, oh, $11, whoops, Ele oh, wow. That was a silly mistake, $11. So if you solve for X, you get $11. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, 59, which of the following is not a characteristic of the normal, mean equals median? Yes, that's true because, I mean, it's not the answer to the question, it's just a true statement because it's symmetric. The total area under the curve is always equal to the one. Well, that's true for every distribution. 99.7% of the time, the random variable assumes values within plus or minus two SD of its mean. Is that correct? No, it's three. Three. So the answer is C. Okay. Um, 60. Suppose that X is normally distributed with a mean of 90 and a standard deviation of 18. Let's clear that. Um, the area between 72 and 90 would be what? Compared to the area between 90 and 108. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? I think they should be equal. They should be equal because each one, uh, Isaac, I'm taking attendance because the math department asked me to take attendance. That's why. I don't know exactly why they want attendance, but they do. Um, I don't know if it's for the number of people or if, I mean, it's not like it's gonna affect your grade. They're not going to give you extra credit for coming here, but um, uh, do you also put down the name of the people that like come later? Yeah, I have people came at eleven oh eight, eleven forty, eleven fifty five, and so on. Oh, okay. Now uh, then, I try to look to see if people leave and try to mark down when they left, if I can. I've, there should be a way of doing it exactly, but I don't know how to do it. I'm not very good at tech. Anyway, um, well, where was I? Oh yeah, so the answer is the same because <laughs> if you go one deviation to the left, which is 34%, half of 68%, 34%, it's the same as one deviation right, which is the other half of the 68%. So uh, one deviation down, one deviation up, it's the same in both directions. 61, which of the following is not a characteristic of the normal. A, the mean, mean, and mode are all equal. That is correct. It's symmetric and it's uh, peaked. The mean can be negative zero or positive. Is that true? Can the mean be negative zero or positive? Yeah. Sure. It can be anything it wants. Uh, the distribution is symmetrical. That is true as well. And the standard deviation must be one. Is that true? No. No, that's true for the standard normal distribution, the one that we use the most, but it's not true in general. So the answer is D. Uh, 62, in a standard normal distribution, the range of Z value, the range of values of Z is from what to what? What are the possible Z values in a standard normal distribution? Zero. Minus one to one? No, it is not minus one to one. 
Is it zero to one? No, that's incorrect as well. Two down, two to go. A? It is A, that is correct. Minus infinity to infinity. B is how many deviations you can be from the mean. You can be as many deviations as you want. Now. Oh. Oh, okay. oh, right, you can be wherever you want, right? You can be, you can be 100 deviations above the mean. I mean, it's not realistic in terms of, um, in terms of actually having data there. We just saw earlier that four deviations out is 99.99%. So it's very unlikely, but the normal curves go on forever in both directions. So in theory, it is possible. 63. For a normal distribution, a negative value of Z indicates what? A, a mistake has been made in computations because Z is always positive. Is that correct? No. No, we just said Z is negative infinity to infinity. Boom, that's out. B, the area corresponding to the Z is negative. Is that correct? No. No, can't have negative area. That's out. C, Z is to the left of the mean, or D, Z is to the right of the mean. Which I is think the, it's C. It is C, the area Z is to the left of the mean. If you are beneath the mean, then X minus X bar will be a negative value. We saw that earlier when we had negative 1.25. So the answer is C. 64, if the mean of a normal distribution is negative, A, the SD must also be negative, true or false? False. False. We saw earlier that the SD is greater than or equal to zero, so that can't be true. B, the variance must be negative, true or false? Variance must be negative, true or false? Mm. Oh, where's everyone at? False. Why is it false? Think, yeah. Why must it be false? Because it's always positive. But it's always positive. It is the square of the standard deviation. Variance is always positive. 67. No, we're back at 64. Uh, A and B are not correct. So C, a mistake has been made because the mean cannot be negative. True or false? False. That's false. So the well, it's false. The mean can be negative. Oh yeah. Right. Wait. Do whatever it wants. It's the average, right? The average of these. It just depends on the data, right? It depends on the data, exactly. Okay. And D, none of these alternatives is correct. We finally have a none of the above. So the answer is D. Okay. So 65 through 68 refer to the standard normal distribution. The probability that Z is between negative 1.96 and negative 1.4. This is a straight up calculator problem. <clears throat> negative um, can I ask a quick question? What is the range of SD? Is it <clears throat> minus one to one? Of SD? Mm -hmm. SD cannot be negative. A standard deviation, not the variance. Well, it still can't be negative. It's it's still a measure of spread. You can't can be negative. I'm sorry. It can or can't be. It cannot be negative. Standard deviation okay. must be greater than or equal to zero. And there's only one time when it would be zero. When is the only time it would be zero? On the mean? When the values are all the same. When the values are all the same. The only time oh. it would be zero is if there's no spread at all. The only way there's no spread is if every value is the same. Once you have two values that are different, you must have a positive spread. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, so 65. What is the probability that Z falls between negative 1.96 and negative 1.4? This is a straight up calculator problem. There's no, uh, I mean, I guess, can you, you can kind of guesstimate it otherwise. But I just did it on my calculator and I got 0.8942. So the answer to 65 is A. You should all know how to do that on your calculator. I got B. I did the normal CDF. I took less than the negative 196 and then less than negative 1.4 and I subtract it. 
Do you have a way on your calculator of doing between uh, two numbers? Yeah, I did the normal CDF. I started with negative 999 and then I plugged in negative um, 196 and then 01. Well, you're right. I uh, I put it in my calculator wrong. <laughs> Silly me. Okay. So you got B.0558? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I put in my calculator wrong. I put in 1.4 and not negative 1.4. So I I'm not, not the, the way you do the calculator, I'm like, it's the normal CDF, right? That's what I did. Yeah, normal okay. CDF. I have a question. Yes. How do you do it in your calculator? Uh, it hits second. Uh -huh. And then hits the button on the right side, right underneath the arrows, um, D-I-S-T-R, distributions. You see it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Then go down one, the normal CDF. Mm -hmm. Then in your lower, put negative 1.96. In your upper, but negative 1.4 with a zero one mu and sigma. Uh -huh. Paste it to the to the stack and then hit enter. And you should get 0 0.0558. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next one, very similar. Z greater than 1.05. My lower will be 1.05. What's my upper? If my lower is 1.05, what's my upper? If I want Z greater than 1.05 on my calculator, I will do my lower 1.05. What is my upper? Is it just nines? It's a bunch of nines. I just kind of spam a bunch of nines to get a really big number. And what do I get when I do that? Or what do you get when you do that? I got 0 0.1460. Me too. So that will be D. Okay. Next, we want the value to the right to be 0 0.98. The area to the right should be 0 0.98. So we're looking for the value of Z. If the area to the right is 0.98, nine, eight. How do I do that on the calculator? Although you can probably do that in your head. How do you find Z on a calculator? Uh, what do you mean find Z on your calculator? Like the value of Z? Because I know how to do the P with normal CDF. Um, so right underneath normal CDF, you should see inverse norm. Do you see it? Oh, yeah. Now, some calculators can do both to the left and to the right, or even in the center. Does your calculator have that option? No. No. So then your calculator is automatically programmed to give areas to the left. So if I want 0.98 to the right, how much of that is going to be to the left? So I subtract it by one. Yeah. And it's so 0 0.02. Yeah. So what does your calculator give when you do that? I get negative 205. Yeah, negative 2.05. That's what I get as well. Okay. Um, sorry, can you please explain? once again how did you get it on calculator like what which buttons so hit second okay distribution where is the distribution <laughs> it's a uh, d-i-s-t-r it's um it's on the right side underneath the arrows in blue the button is b-a-r-s for me at least yeah, so it's in blue right above V-A-R-S. It says D-I-S-T-R. Do you see that? No. Um, so oh, wait a second. Uh, how can I, like, um, check out my calculators? Like, what should I search for it? No, it's, it's, on, it's on the screen. It's on, on the top of your calculator. You can see it when you look at no, the No, no, no. I'm saying, like, maybe my calculator because it's different. Oh, what kind of calculator? How, it's FX 455. Oh, oh, I, I, I would have no idea uh, how, how. Okay, how, what, is the, what is the function that we are looking for, like, to do? So I can look uh, it up on the... I would say it's um, look up inverse normal. 
inverse normal. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what I would imagine. Um, and Thank then you. What, you're welcome. And what is the value of z if the area to the right is 0 0.02 without doing any calculator work? What is the value if the area to the right is 0 0.02? 205. Yeah, it'll be the positive version. We agree? I have a quick question. Yeah. So when I did number 67, yeah. So on my calculator, I can't choose the left and right version. So I got negative 2.0537. So would the answer wait, 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 wait. What, what area did it put in for that one? Uh 0 0.02. So that's the answer. So negative two. But for, yeah, but is it A or B? Because it's negative. It doesn't oh. round up to I know it's a mistake. It's, it should be negative 2.05. Not negative. Two okay. Points. And then, so then 68 would just be the opposite, which would be yeah. A. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, 69. The average lateness for one of the top airline companies is 10 minutes. The variance of the lateness measure is calculated as nine. An airplane arrived 8.5 minutes after the stated arrival time. Calculate the Z score for this particular airplane's lateness. How do I calculate a Z score? This is not a calculator thing. You can do this in your head or on paper. How do I calculate a Z score? Is it 10 minus? Hold on, hold on. What's a formula for Z score? Let's start there. What's the oh, Z equals your value or like X minus mean over the standard deviation. Okay, and what is my value? Uh, it's nine. It's nine, and what is the mean? Oh, sorry, not nine. My value is not nine. It's 10, right? Oh, my value is not 10 either. 8.5. My value is 8.5. Oh, okay. Right? This is the actual data point, 8.5. So I do 8.5 minus 10. 10. And divided by? Three. Nine. Three. The variance is nine. But the oh. standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So I divide by three. Yes? Yes. OK. Um, and then I get negative 0.5. 70. The scores of adults on an IQ test are approximately normal with mean 100 and standard deviation 15. Alyssa scores, Alicia scores 115 on such a test. She scores higher than what percent of all adults? You can actually do this in your head. You can actually do this in your head. Mm, got it. What's the answer? Is it D? Why is it D? Um. I don't know how to explain it, but like I, I just did some stuff in my head. <laughs> First of all, just, just so you know, that is great to hear because getting to the point when you can do things in your head and you're not even sure how to articulate it, it's just so natural to do. It's like explaining to someone how to breathe. Like you can't really teach that. It's just so internalized. That yeah, is yeah. a great sign, to be honest. Of course, it's a better sign if you could explain it. So here's what I did is I said, well, 115 is one standard deviation above the mean, correct? Yes. And I know that if I go one mean in either direction, that's going to be how much percent of my data? 15. Whoa there, buddy. Oh, wait. <laughs> you go one deviation in either direction, how much percent of the data have you caught? In your, in, your, in your normal curve, if you go one deviation from the, from the mean, what percent is that going to be? 32? Well, in both directions. 60. 68%, right? 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Remember that one? Yeah. Right? So if we go one deviation in either direction from the mean, if we go from here to here, that's going to be 68%, correct? Now, that means 
to the left of it is going to be what percent? Uh, roughly 16%. Roughly 16%. For a total of what percent is less than your data point, which was right here? Oh, 84%. 84%. And when I look at the data points, D, 84%. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, 71. On the post entry level law enforcement test battery, the pellet B, are normally distributed. Again, grammar doesn't look good with mean 40 and standard deviation 10. Suppose that a person who took pellet B was randomly selected then the probability that the score of the selected person will be between 35 and 50 is what? This is a calculator problem. Of course, only one of them really makes sense, even without a calculator, but the calculator can get it exactly. What do we got? Anyone? On your calculator, what you what you should you put in for lower, for upper, for mean, and for standard deviation? Um, lower would be thirty five, and upper would be fifty. Lower would be thirty five. Upper would be fifty. What's the mean and deviation? The mean is forty, and the deviation is ten. The mean is forty. The deviation is ten. What does your calculator give you? Um, let me see. <laughs> I got 0.5328. 0.5328 is what I got. So that's it for D. Of course, again, you could have done it by process of elimination in your head, at least ballpark, because if the mean is 40, we want one deviation up to 50 and a half a deviation down to 35. So it's going to be less than 68%, but more than 34%. And really only one of them falls in that category of 0.5328. 72, the starting salaries of individuals with an MBA degree are normally distributed with a mean of 40,000 and a standard deviation of 5,000. What is the probability that a randomly selected individual with an MBA degree will get a starting salary of at least 30,000? Make sure for your upper, you do lots of nines for this one. So what do we got? I got 0.9772. That's what I got. Again, solely on the calculator, very quickly. 73, what is the 95th percentile for the starting salaries of individuals with an MBA degree? 95th percentile. All right, just did it on my calculator. What do you guys got? Is it D? Uh, I did not get D. 
I did inverse norm area to the left 0.95 with a mean of 40,000 and a deviation of 5,000. Uh, it's C. I got C. Does that make sense? You all get C? Someone said D a few minutes ago or a few seconds ago. I want to make sure you understand why it's C. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. For 72, yeah. you went to normal CDF, correct? For 73? No, inverse normal. 72. 72 was normal CDF, yeah. And it was, the lower was 30,000 and then the upper would be 0 0.0, 0.999? Not 0.999, it's 9999999999. Just do oh. lots of nines. You're basically putting it in infinity. You want that to be really, 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 really big. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, so, where am I here? 74. The starting salary that is greater than 60% of all individuals is what? Boom, done. That's how long it should take. These things should be very quick once you get the hang of it. I got B. I got B too. All right, awesome. Very, very quick. The only change you make is making 0.95 equal to 0.6. Everything else is exactly the same. 75. In a normally distributed random variable with a mean of 430 and a deviation of 112, what percent fall between 94 and 766? 94. 766. Why there's so many repeats? Done. Uh-oh. That's not there. Oh. Good. Put in the wrong number. That's there. What's the answer? Mm, that's not there either. Um, I got 99. Yeah, so did I. Maybe it's just the hundred. B. Oh, oh yeah, they probably mean a hundred percent. Even though it's not really 100%, but that's probably what they mean. Dan has it as 95%, but I'm like confused on which one would I go uh, with. I get 99.7 on my calculator. Is that what you got? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if I had the big one, of the, see, the danger of saying 100, even though it rounds to 100, is we kind of have this impression that it's an actual 100. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not actually 100. It's just, it just rounds there. Uh, but it's, it's not B. I mean, sorry, it's not A. It's not 95%. It's certainly closer to 100% than it is to 95%. So okay. I, I would do, uh, I would say B. B. Yeah. What is the actual weekly wage for an employee whose Z score is negative 1.75? So here we do not need a calculator. I mean, you do, but not uh, the CDF part of the calculator. Z scores to data, that's just a nice, your Z score formula. What do you get for that formula? Uh, are we trying to solve for X? Yeah, for the data point. What is the actual weekly wage? That's your data. What is your actual data? Oh, let me do it real You would have to solve for X, right? Like, yep. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. I did C. Uh, I got C as well. And that's just, again, your data is the same formula we had before, Z equals data minus mean divided by deviation. Um, 77, what is the approximate 84th percentile? Done, got it. What do we got? A. I got A. Again, this is how fast these things should take. When you really get the hang of these, these are very, very quick. And what is the approximate 50th percentile? Well, that's easy. <laughs> What's, don't even do your calculator. 
You take out your calculator, I'll mark you off, even if you get the right answer. What's the answer to this one? A. A, how do you know it's A? Because the mean is 430. Exactly, exactly. Um, For number 76, sorry to interrupt. Um, since we're trying to find X, wouldn't it be a different formula? Y, here's X right here. Oh, okay. we, have, we, have the other, we have the other three things we need. We just plug it in and solve. Okay, got it. Make sense? Yes, it does. All right. So now let's go down. 79. Back to qualitative questions. A visual representation of the data. Where the hell are you going? The visual representation of the data on simple regression analysis is called a? What's it called? Scatter plot. Scatter plot. 80. A researcher measures the correlation between two variables. This correlation tells us A, B, C, or D. Which one is it? Uh, it's A. A. It is A for sure. 81. In linear regression. The variable that explains the response called is the. The variable that explains the response called is the. Ah, uh, that's just weird. I think it's is called the. What's it called? Response variable. I'm sorry? Is it the response variable? The variable that explains the response variable is called. Oh, oh right. no, it says that explains the response. It explains the response. So the response variable doesn't explain the response. The, the oh, response it, variable is the one that's responding. Oh, isn't it the explanatory variable? It should be the explanatory yeah, variable. I don't they know. know. They don't have that here. So we have to think about what else there is. Uh, it's also the independent variable because the X one is the independent. Y depends on X. So X is independent. And it's also the predictor variable because it predicts what the outcome is going to be. So we've used predictor, explanatory, or independent interchangeably. It's actually all three of them. In this case, the answer is D. Both A and B are correct. Got it. Okay. Um, so when using the least squares model for estimation and prediction purposes, the values of the independent variable should be A, B, C, or D. A. A, what do we call it when it's not? Oh, uh, extrapolation or something. Extrapolation, like right? We always want the the values within the range. Otherwise, you are extrapolating, which is not good. Um, 83. In linear regression, application of the least squares method results in values of the y-intercept and the slope, which minimizes the sum of the square deviations between... A, B, C, or D? C. It is C. It's the observed values of the dependent variable and the estimated values of the dependent variable. It's all about the Y values, not the X values. 84, if the correlation coefficient R is equal to one, then A, B, C, or B? Uh, is it C? It is C. Remember, R squared, which is also one, is how much the uh, 
uh, variation in y is explained by the variation in x. If r squared is equal to one, then all the variation in y is explained by the variation in x. And we have no unexplained variation. 85, in a simple linear regression problem, suppose that the least square regression line is y equals one minute. Oh, we did this one before. Um, r squared is 0.81, so r equals plus or minus 0.9, negative or positive 0.9 but because the slope of the regression line is negative, it is B, negative 0.9. I believe that one was one of the mistakes that we had before. Um, 86, in linear regression, if the y-intercept is positive, then... A, B, C, or D? Uh, is it A? Nope. Okay. Oh, B, right? None of the above. None of the above. It's none of the above. Wait, why? The y intercept is just where it crosses the y axis. It's the slope that tells you how one changes as the other changes. Right? As I, as I move this way, one, I go up three, and my slope is three. The y-intercept is just where it crosses the y-axis. It can be positive, it can be negative, it can be anything. There's no connection between how x and y change in relation to each other. The answer is none of the above. Anahit, make sense? Yes, thank you. 87, based on the scatter diagram below, what is the relationship between x and y? Well, it seems moderately linear and certainly negative. So I would go D. 88, in linear regression, suppose that the independent variable is measured in miles and the dependent variable is measured in hours. Then the slope of the least squares line is measured in what? Miles per hour. Miles per hour. Give me one second, hold on. For that one, they put B. But hold on one second, guys. Can I call you back in five minutes? Okay, right back. Okay, bye. Uh, if they put D, that is incorrect. The answer, well, go go back for a second. Maybe I misread it. Uh, e, the hours per mile. Oh, yeah. It's hours per mile because but the why? dependent is hours, the Y is hours, and the, and the X, the independent is miles, and slope is Y over X, hours per mile. We think miles per hour. It's certainly more natural, but it's hours per mile. Okay. Yes, no? Yes? Yeah. Okay. 89, the slope coefficient in a linear regression equation represents the amount of change in Y per one unit change in X. How much does Y go up as I move one unit in the X direction? So that is C. That's a definition. 90, if the dependent variable increases, so Y goes up, as a dependent variable, independent variable decreases as X goes left. So then I have a negative slope. The correlation coefficient would be in negative values. It has to be D, negative one to negative 0.4. 91, if the coefficient of correlation is 0.4, if R is 0.4, the percentage of variation in the dependent variable explains by the variation of an independent variable is R squared. What is 0.4 squared? 0.16 or 16%. So the answer to 91 is D by definition. Uh, not by definition, but it just happens to be. 92. If R represents the sample correlation coefficient in a simple linear regression problem, which of the following cannot be true? Well, the first one, we have a positive slope, positive correlation. Negative slope, negative correlation. Negative slope, positive correlation. Ooh, gotta be C. That can't be right. We agree? Yes. Um, can you explain 91 once again? Yeah, uh, R is 0.4. So what's R squared? What's 0.4 it's squared? 16 percent. 16 percent. So that is the percent of variation in Y that is explained by the variation in X. It is the R squared value. Oh, okay. okay. 
You uh, said 92 was C. 92 is C, yeah, because you cannot have a negative slope and a positive correlation. Okay. 93. In the stat course, a linear regression equation was computed to predict the final exam score from the score on the first test. That was the equation. And score 95 on the first test. So what is the predicted value of her score on the final exam? What would I do to get that? You plug in the 95 into the X? Yep, you plug it in, you get 95.5. The answer is D. 94. Anne scored 95 in the first test, and her final exam score, she scored an 898. What is her residual? Of course, to answer this, you have to know what a residual is, but we've covered that already today. What is the residual? It's the difference between expected and observed. Exactly. So, of, of course, the order that you do it is important. It's observed minus expected or predicted. So what is the observed here? 98. And what is the predicted? Um, We have to put the 95 in the equation. Yeah, but we did that in the last problem. So we already have the answer. Oh, 95.5. 95.5. So 98 minus 95.5 is um, 2.5. OK. Um, and it's about 1 o'clock, so this is a good time. How many questions are left? Just I'm curious how much we got through. There's 112 questions, so actually we actually didn't do half bad. Yeah, and we started right away and not you know answered questions in the beginning. I think we. And I'm not saying it was bad to do that, but uh, I think it would have been doable to do all of them in, in two hours. So um, that wasn't bad. How many how many mistakes were there overall so far? Like more than five or six. Five or six. Okay. Um. Not horrible, but again, you shouldn't have any on a review. That's the uh, ideal. So I hope this was useful for everyone.